As we await the arrival of our rental machine to dig in the footer for the addition, we turn our focus to a project Josh has been dreaming about. And I am so excited so am to have power down here. Step by step, year by year, we are creating the off-grid property we always dreamed of. We got lights. You guys didn't have to make some day, actually. It's awesome having lights here. Right now, we're in a season of grind, but I'm guessing that within the next two years, we reach the point at which we sit back and say, this is it, we're done. Get the her machines, girl. You know what this means, right? Dig, 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 pour concrete. Got to do some work. We're on our way down to our lower pasture that's got the pond. This is where we've been keeping the cows at lately. And I wasn't exactly planning on getting back in touch with that fence stretcher anytime soon, but here we are. <laughs> we've got some fencing to fix already. Buddy. Yeah, it's good to see ya. I wish they could see the baby. Hi, buddy. Oh my gosh, boy. <laughs> I love it. I think you need a donkey, huh? <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you want to live on this side of the fence permanently? He could drink that water. Oh yeah. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's so cute. So where do you think they're getting out of, girl? I think it's right here because it's all bent down and that's the existing fencing that we didn't fix. It's definitely there and possibly also over here. They could be climbing underneath the fencing that's right down there where the okay. cliff bed is. The two spots. That's definitely a hole. Yes. Now that you pointed it out. Yes. <laughs> so everybody has basically switched sides. Our neighbor's donkeys are on our side of the pasture and our cows are on their side of the pasture. So <laughs> we've got to flip flop everybody back and then we're going to stretch this fencing across and button it up and wait and see what the next weak spot in the fence is and tackle that another day. <laughs> There we go. That's the weak spot. Dax is going to take the opposite route. He's going to hop over. Come on, guys. Show how athletic you are. There we go. So, Come two on. Points, huh? Two weak spots. There you go, guy. We walk this road. It takes us home when love is true. That's good enough for now, so the cows will stay here, the donkeys will stay out. We love the donkeys, they're cute, they're fun to pet with, but uh, our concerns keep our cows inside. So if the cows stay in here, it means the donkeys can't get in. Over the past couple of years, one of the goals that we've been working towards is slowly making all of our systems on the farm more efficient. And one of the things that we've had on our to-do list is getting power to this barn for a couple of reasons. One, lights down here would be really, really nice to have when we're coming down and doing things really early in the morning or late at night. Also, I've really been wanting some cameras down here, not for security reasons, but for like births that we have on the farm from like lambing and kidding and all that sort of thing. And Josh would like to be able to run some power tools on here whenever I have him down here making any improvements to yes. the barn. So the issue that we've had is we are so far from grid power that it would be extremely expensive for us to tie into that mm -hmm. up here at the barn. And at the same time, we're so far from the powerhouse where our solar power is to run our house. So we're 400 yards? Yes, yeah, so we couldn't come off the panels because all the power distribution is in the powerhouse. It goes from the panels to the powerhouse and from the powerhouse it goes out to the house and all around there to give power. 
So we can't come direct from the panels to come here because we have no components to mm -hmm. distribute the power. But like Aaron said, it's 400 yards away. That's a lot of pipe, a lot of digging, and a lot of wire. It upsides in that wire. That 400 yards is astronomical in price. Yeah, so we, there had to be a better solution for yes. this. And what we've decided to do is to install a self-contained solar system mm -hmm. down here at the barn using EcoFlow's power kit. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I am so excited so am to have power down here. I mean, it's... It's just cool because slowly we've been moving along and making improvements and all these little things that we've been doing everywhere has made life a lot easier. Yes. And this is one of those things. Yes, I think I'm more looking forward to installing the solar equipment than having it down here. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being able to be up in the house and checking my phone to see what's going on down here with like mama sheep that are lambing and not having to like run down here in the middle of the night trying to keep an eye on it because we're going to have cameras installed. So. We have power to power them up. We'll have power. All right, so I'm going to start with mounting the solar panels first. And we'll go ahead through and wire them all together. And then we'll bring the wire down and mount all the components. And once that's mounted, we'll plug it all in. It's cool. easy. Fan of roofs. You've been spending a lot of time on roofs lately, Josh. I, I, in high spots, like <laughs> lighthouses and roofs. The problem with this roof is, if I fall down that way, I hit a bridge. If I go that way and fall, I hit the dirt. If I go that way, I hit the dirt, and it's like a 25 foot drop. Yeah. So, that ladder's tile. So, if I start sliding down that way, I'm going to grab that ladder. So, I'll use two more of those. And once it get bolted down, we'll go ahead and uh, push panels up. And we'll start from the bottom panel, bolt in place, and work our way up. So looking at our panels, each panel is 100 watts and the operating voltage is 17.1 volts. So that makes the panel about 5.9 amps. And how we're going to work all this together is we're actually going to take all eight of these panels. We're going to wire everything in series. So it's going to be uh, 17.1 times 8. It's going to be 136.8, I think I've calculated it to. So it's going to be 136 volts coming off the panels that goes down to the inverter itself. And the max input rating on that inverter is 150 volts. And it's also 30 amps, but being 800 watts at, a, at a 136 volts, it's going to leave us with a five, about 5.9 amps. So why aren't all these in series into that one port? It's going to work fine for us. There's actually three ports. So technically, I could actually put eight on one port and then put, have uh, another 16 divided on the other two ports itself. And we're going to have a total of, is that 24 panels? So this thing's a beast. It's, it's a small, it's a little guy, but this thing's a beast. We got four of the eight panels installed and we're gonna go through and wire these panels up now because it's gonna make our lives a little bit easier we'll wire them through because what's gonna happen is we're gonna put the next four up and we're gonna pretty much block ourselves. So. Like I said earlier, we're gonna wire everything in series. And all we're gonna do is from the first panel here, we have a positive lead hanging out that's gonna go back to the uh, power hub. And we're gonna take the negative lead that's gonna to connect to the positive lead. And this negative lead on the same panel goes to the next positive. The negative lead goes to the same next positive all the way around. And that's pretty much wiring it in series. When you do that, it jumps the voltage. So the voltage, if you wire it in series, it's additive. So if it's 17 volts, it's 17 volts plus 17 volts plus 17 volts plus 17 volts all the way around so we're gonna have roughly uh, 136 volts with all these panels of wire to go in series.
Those are done. We have a positive lead and a negative lead hanging out. They're wired in the series. So we are good to start mounting all the equipment and plugging everything in. First thing we're gonna do is install the power hub. This is where everything pretty much plugs into. Uh, that's what makes this thing so easy, is everything has its own little dedicated cord and everything just pops out. You plug your battery right on in there. There's no splicing, no cut, no nothing, which is pretty sweet. Um, the panels, solar panels, also plug into here. I can plug an alternator into here to charge your batteries. There's also an AC input, so you can uh, charge your batteries if you have AC power here. But what we're doing here is we have, uh, we're off grid. So there's no power around here, as you guys know. Um, we're using solar panels to operate this entire thing. So the next thing we're gonna do is pretty much install all the components and then we'll go through and show them how we're wiring everything up. So we have our touch screen mounted. This is we're gonna see what the charge is and how everything's operating. Obviously, here's the hub again. Going down here, we have our distribution panel, and uh, this is where the 120 volts is going to come off the hub itself. Come down to the distribution panel, tie in down here where it says uh, line, neutral, ground, and we have our six breakers. This right here operates at 120 volts. We also have a low voltage side, which is uh, 12 volts, and this is where this entire system comes into use with uh, the alternator. If you have it in a van or an RV, you can use it with that also. So, we're actually not going to use any of the DC. 12 volt section because uh, I don't need it down here in the barn. I need lights and power. <laughs> so that's that. And we got down here, we have our 5kW battery. Um, that's perfect amount of power we need for down here. Like I said, we'll use power down here every once in a while for uh, plugging the tools in and the lights every once in a while. So that 5kW battery is perfect. Um, this hub itself actually has uh, three uh, connection points for three batteries. So you can have a total of 15kW on that. Uh, Hub. That's a lot of power. We're going to wire through here. You see uh, L for line, N for neutral, and that was the ground signs for AC power N. So it's actually going to come off the, uh, this ties in right here, and it's going to come off the uh, hub, and it plugs directly into the hub itself. Easy. We're gonna plug the Cat 5E in the back of the screen. Like that. Put it back up. Take the other side of the Cat 5E. It's gonna plug in directly into here. And we're gonna go from this next port down to the distribution panel and all the Cat 5 is ran. that perfect next thing we're going to do is run the cable up to the roof to the solar panels we'll snap those together and then we're going to go ahead and take the other side and snap it into the hub Everything's mounted and wired up and plugged in, and I'm uh, very excited, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this is very easy, anybody can do it. It's, it's, it's truly a DIY system. You just plug everything in and you're done. We have a lot of questions, I guess it's not questions, but people saying, I don't think I could do a solar system like you did. This you can do, it's truly DIY. It's just, if you can read a little manual, just plug it in and go, it's, it's that simple. 
turn it on real quick. So the hub is turned on. You guys can see the PVN that's coming from the solar panel. It's starting to get dark out here. It's probably around seven o'clock. I'm not sure how much charging. It's probably doing a little bit of charging. We have the DC button, the AC button. DC, we're not using it because we're not gonna use any DC power down here. But we did connect the AC power, so we're gonna turn that on. That's on, and it clicked. It's kind of that it closed on this. There's power down here. This little light just turned on. So this thing is energized. That right there is hot. The screen is functional. We're gonna go more in depth on the screen once we have the uh, everything tied in there and there's a load getting drawn off of this thing and also uh, when the sun's go up and then we're charging. So I just wanna go through there, see what we're using, see what we're making and uh, go through this entire thing. If you all can't tell, I'm very, very excited. But the first thing to do so nobody gets shocked is close that thing up. Charging. Sun's out. So, I think we're gonna do four lights throughout here. One, two, three, and four. And how many cameras do you want and where do you want it at? I just need one, like a nanny cam, a lammy cam. A lammy cam? From there, down to the stalls. Because I'm going to want to be able to see all three of the all little right. So we're going to put an outlet there so we can constantly charge. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Start with the lights. Start with the lights. Once we get all four of the lights up, we'll go through and pull all the MC through and then wire everything up and close it all up. I don't anticipate us needing any more inside of here, but we may want to put one outside with a motion detector so when we walk up here at night, the light turns on when you're on the bridge. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just installed the four strip lights throughout the barn and uh, they're a little cheapo. I think they're, they're, they're not too cheap, they're 40 bucks each. They're little LEDs, but they put out tons of lights. They're gonna be fantastic for inside here. We're gonna start outside. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our 12-2 MC. We're gonna go down to the back side. I'm gonna pull everything straight through, go to the very end of the line and I'm gonna pop that in, splice that wire up, and we're gonna come back through and just start pulling loops everywhere. And wherever there's a loop at, we'll cut, pop it into the light and uh, keep on splicing. Before you know it, we're gonna have lights. So are you gonna use the ladder to get up there then? Yeah, of course, we get the ladder to get there. But I'm gonna move the ladder and go every section, so I'm just gonna go through and crawl through the uh, rafters. You know what I mean? Is that safe? Sure hope so. I haven't put some weight on, but we'll see. <laughs> I'm, 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 at, I'm at a solid 184 pounds, so I'm not too bad. <laughs> not that bad for 6'2", though, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, if somebody was scared of heights, I do the dumbest stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You're always up high lately. It's not OSHA approved, Josh. Okay, I'm a trained professional.
So while Josh finishes wiring up these lights, I'm going ahead and getting the app installed on my phone. All I had to do was basically go in there and get the EcoFlow app and then it went ahead and it actually found the device for me through Bluetooth. I had to just choose what kind of configuration we're setting it up for. We're obviously off grid, not an RV setup. I clicked on it and now I can see everything and we can manage everything from our phone. So we're able to see exactly how much power we're bringing in, how much power we're using, what our battery life is, everything. And we can control it all from the phone. So. I'm very excited about the solar system, I'm not gonna lie. I just love solar. That's, I, my, that's my biggest thing, you know? I know. He's, he's getting me into that I'm whole a, thing I'm too a, now. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to solar. So all lights powered up. I'm about to put this box up to get the switch in there to get the lights turned on. And it looks like we may have a storm coming in. It's clear back there. It looks like it's gonna pass over. Once this gets passed, it'll probably be fine. Famous last words. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's always a storm rolling in. It's gonna rain for a few and it'll roll out. No big deal, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Last time, it's gonna be good too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, this is our distribution panel. This side surely comes in for the AC portion. Um, this other side is for the DC section. So we're gonna wire everything up. If you're looking, it says AC out. So that's all AC power. You have all your grounds, you have all your neutrals, and you have your uh, line for your line that goes in it, which is your power. So we'll wire this thing up. Keep in mind guys, I am an electrician, so I'm comfortable installing this. If you're not uncomfortable installing this, EcoFlow will install this for free for those who qualify. If you look at this, they're all numbered one through six. That corresponds with the uh, breakers up top, one through six. We tied into position six because when we're wiring everything up, we want to wire from the furthest thing down and work our way back so we're not blocking anything. So that's why I went into the sixth breaker. It's that easy. This entire thing's wired up. I think the hardest part was uh, doing the lights and the plugs. <laughs> the most time consuming at least. But it was that easy, everything's plugged in. Um, one thing I wish they would do with this is this little opening right here. I wish they actually had uh, little KOs or knockouts so I can put a connector in there and put it in there properly without doing something like that. But the system is fantastic. Let's go ahead and fire this up real quick. So I'm gonna fire it up at the AC button. It's on. Light just kicked on. So we are energized. I'm gonna go to breaker number six, flip it up. We're energized and it should be energized to the switch and plug. So let's go ahead and and we got lights. <laughs> you guys didn't have mix one day, actually. It's awesome having lights in here. I've never seen it this bright in here before. Never, right? I've never seen it this bright, ever. It's crazy. It's pretty sweet, right? Yeah, I love it. It's that's fun. Yeah. We're having, we're having a blast here, guys. A little, <laughs> little bit of solo, that's all. Off-grid excitement. <laughs> so sweet. So everything should be good to go, babe. Yeah. It's awesome. It's, so, I'm, it's crazy. See what we're drawing. So right here, the output right now is about 200 watts. That's what the uh, lights are drawing. Um, if you guys can't hear, 
it's actually raining out here and if we're still bringing in 140 watts so these lights aren't gonna stay on all the time so they're gonna be on when we're down here for coming here early in the morning at night and who knows maybe during the day we'll turn them on too um but as of right now with the rain coming down still pulling in 140 watts 200 watts we don't live down here obviously that's a 5kw battery that thing's gonna stay charged all the time we'll come down here for 15 20 minutes turn stuff on turn stuff off it's never gonna be below 80 percent i'm telling you right now but when we need the lights and need the power at night this is why it all comes in handy and if we wanted to the system's also expandable i can put two more batteries on here for a 15kw um, battery but also so right now we are plugged into one section for solar i have, I have uh, 800 watts on the roof so we can actually do uh, 1600 watts per port. So what's that? 4,800, yeah, 4,800 watts. So you can put 4,800 watts with a solar on here and also 15 kW of battery backup. Thing's a monster, it's a beast. It's a little guy, it's so simple, so easy to plug in. I'm in love. <laughs> Sorry, babe. <laughs> I've been replaced. <laughs> Hit the her machines, girl. You know what this means, right? Dig, 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 dig. Pouring concrete. Got to do some work. 